Hello everyone. This week we'll be talking about why the West is afraid of Ethiopia's GERD. We'll go over the GERD background, how the West views the GERD, benefits of the GERD, financing the GERD, controversy involving the GERD, anti-GERD, uh, and anti-GERD commentary by MIT in 2015, Pro, a pro-GERD commentary by Nature Communication in 2020, and my bottom line. The Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, GERD, will generate 6,000 megawatts. Currently, Ethiopia's or in 2011, Ethiopia's power demand was only 1,100 megawatts. Ethiopia will export electricity to other African countries and even to Europe and earn between one and two billion dollars annually from the GERD. The GERD will make Ethiopia a powerhouse in East Africa and in integrate the region economically. President Obama's U.S. Power African Initiative did not support the GERD. In 2020, President Trump said Egypt might have to blow up the GERD, quote unquote. The Trump administration cut aid to Ethiopia by $100 million uh, behind the GERD. Electricity costs Sub-Saharan Africa between 160 and 250 billion dollars every 10 years. The GERD is renewable energy, meaning that it's good for the environment and it, it doesn't cost much uh, for the the uh, the government to produce. It, it only has to maintain it because uh, renewable energy regenerates itself. Uh, water from the the sky comes down and and refills the the reservoirs of the the GERD. So it's renewable energy. The GERD will bring electricity to cities, towns, and villages in Ethiopia. <clears throat> Excuse me. I was looking at a Deutsche Welle documentary a few days ago. Uh, Deutsche Welle, in case you, you don't know, is uh, German. It's like CNN or the BBC for, for Germany. And it's in different languages, but I, I watch it in German. And there was a young lady from Germany. Uh, I guess she was an environmental scientist. Uh, they showed her in a documentary going to Ethiopia and uh, uh, providing a solution to the air pollution problem caused by uh, the Ethiopian uh, women who uh, have to use, uh, I think it's charcoal, to uh, to fuel their stoves, and and it's bad for the environment. It's, excuse me, it's bad for their health. Uh, but the GERD uh, will solve this problem because it will provide electricity to all parts of, of Ethiopia, including the, the rural areas. So there won't be any need for this German woman to, to go to Ethiopia every year to, to, uh, to try to, uh, to, to solve uh, the, the problem of, of air pollution. If, uh, the GERD will also power Ethiopia's commerce schools, hospitals, farms, etc. And Ethiopia is a hub for factories. So the GERD will, will be a boom for, for its manufacturing industry. Also, uh, the, without power in hospitals, doctors can't operate. Uh, without power, schools can't uh, the teachers have a difficult time teaching their students. And in case you haven't lived in developing nations, uh, which I have, um, they often have rolling blackouts, uh, meaning that 
for maybe a half hour or hours. Uh, sometimes in some countries, every day there's no power, and and that's due to a, a shortage of, of of energy in the uh, in these countries. The GERD will help Ethiopia, Sudan, and Egypt regulate the Blue Nile's water flow. Um, because of the reservoir, the uh, the Ethiopians who will be at the source of, of uh, almost at the source, I think the source of the Nile is in Uganda, it's either Uganda or, or Kenya, but I think it's Uganda. But, uh, but since they're upstream, where pretty much where the, the Blue Nile starts, uh, if not where the Blue Nile starts, because you have the White Nile and you have different parts of the, the Nile, uh, they will be able to, with the, this technology of, of the dam, they will be able to regulate uh, when the water will uh, flow. So making more even flows of water, uh, predictable flows of water uh, uh, of the Nile River. The GERD will reduce soil erosion along the Blue Nile in Ethiopia, Sudan, and Egypt. Financing the GERD. The GERD is costing Ethiopia close to $5 billion to construct. Ethiopia financed the GERD by selling bonds and other crowdfunding methods. Uh, also by another method, which I'll go into. Uh, the contributions that the Ethiopian government acquired, uh, much of which came from the Ethiopian diaspora, uh, were uh, donated on the official website of the Prime Minister of Ethiopia. And I I recently, well, a year ago or so, I, I, I was thinking, um, probably thinking back to the days of the, when I grew up in the 70s and 80s, you always had these telethons. They were for <laughs> you young people, the older people like me, they know exactly what I'm talking about. Telethons. Uh, the, the person who was really known for for well, with Lou Rawls, again, I, I won't get into Lou Rawls, but he was a, a famous black singer, uh, entertainer. And then you had uh, uh, Jerry Lewis, who was a, a comedian. He was very uh, popular. And uh, these were two guys that were known for, or two entertainers uh, that were known for for the telethons. And they would go on for a whole day. And um, telethons were to raise money for different things, for hospitals or whatever, uh, different um, um, uh, uh, organizations, uh, nonprofit organizations that, that are helpful to the, the community. And so, you know, they would have people working on the phones and they would always show them every hour or so calling, taking in calls. So you would, they were called telethons. So you, you know, like a marathon and you would call in and donate however much money you, you could. And so I'm from that generation. So I know how the benefit of, of what's now called crowdfunding, you know, now you have GoFundMe. And so uh, not too long ago, I thought it would be smart if African governments would have a, an official website for their government where they can take in these funds and maybe every year have sort of a telethon, but a GoFundMe or whatever, but without the cost of of uh, of of, uh, of uh, GoFundMe and um, you know just uh, campaign you know once a year or whatever for maybe the uh, you know it's people in the diaspora from say Nigeria, Kenya, or whatever, can contribute to uh, uh, pay off the, the uh, national debt, the, the foreign debt of a, of a country. And maybe it would take five years to do it or whatever. I, I think it could be done. Maybe they could, each country, depending on the size, like in Nigeria, could raise it maybe a billion dollars. And you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about with, with the example that Ethiopia gives. But I, what, 
the government of Ethiopia did with financing the GERD is exactly what I was thinking other, all African countries could do to get rid of their, their debt so they could start developing because too much of their money is going toward foreign debt, and whereas they could be building schools, they could be investing in education and their uh, uh, businesses, etc. Okay, so um, as I said, the contributions were, uh, uh, the bonds and whatnot uh, were made, uh, you know, the, they, the, the government, Ethiopian government sold bonds that matured in between five and 10 years, I think. And um, so they raised a lot of money from that. So it shows that, you know, it, it goes back to Africa needing African solutions for African problems and not looking uh, to to the outside for, for solutions or for aid or, or what have you. We, we have the solutions. And again, we're talking about why the West is afraid of Ethiopia's GERD. And, and I'm showing you um, uh, the different reasons why uh, they, they fear the GERD because of, I mean, there are many, there are several reasons why. Uh, the GERD was also financed by the Chinese government, uh, which uh, financed the turbine engines and electrical equipment uh, for the GERD. The Gulf states that are not friendly to Egypt because Egypt is is against the GERD because they're down down uh, stream, and so they they fear uh, Ethiopia having power over them. Uh, so the Gulf states that are not friendly toward Egypt contributed to the construction of the GERD. Uh, controversy involving the GERD. Ethiopia's highlands supply 85% of the Nile's water. That's quite a bit. The Nile River, it's a very big river. I think it's the third largest in volume. I think the Amazon is the largest. Maybe the Congo is second and the Nile is third. Or, or the Nile is second and the Congo is, is uh, third. But I think the Congo is actually has more water. Anyway, but it's a large river and an ancient river, very important river for the agriculture in the area, especially in, in Egypt. Um, so the controversy with this is, is going to give, or it could give and it will give Ethiopia a lot of power, especially over the countries that are downstream like Sudan and then uh, Egypt. Large populations may have to be re relocated after the GERD begins operations. I think that's a small price to pay. I, I mean, obviously they wouldn't think so, moving their homes and so forth, but in, uh, in the long run, it, it's, it's a small price to pay for Ethiopia's development and, and uh, Ethiopia becoming a, uh, uh, a strong economy. Egypt wants Ethiopia to fill the GERD in 10 years instead of four, the four to six years uh, that are planned. And they, they f just finished the construction from what I understand. Uh, we're in 2021, excuse me, so it's expected to be completed by 2025 to 2027. And uh, Egypt uh, wants, wants uh, Ethiopia to take longer filling the GERD to, to avoid uh, a potential drought. Egypt and Sudan wanted stipulated when Ethiopia will release water from the GERD's reservoir during the drought, uh, while Ethiopia wants to reserve flexibility on the matter, which to me makes sense. It's, it's their government, it's their land, they can do whatever they want. Uh, but of course, they have to respect the, the um, um, uh, the, um, the, the livelihoods and et cetera, the economies, et cetera, of, of the, the nations that are downstream, uh, namely Sudan and Egypt. An anti-GERD commentary was given by MIT. There were many, and it's not surprising because, again, we're talking about 
why the West fears the GERD. And uh, you'll be the judge of, of uh, if the U.S. is actually fearful of it and if they sh uh, and why they they are, are probably fearful of it uh, after this commentary. But uh, one of the many anti-GERD commentaries was the one done by MIT scientists in 2015, uh, six years ago. Uh, I think the GERD, they started, they started building it somewhere around that time. Uh, Egypt and Egypt, they say there are different things. I think there were about five or six, uh, maybe five, but I have one, two, three, four, five. I think there were six. I left out one that I, I didn't think was very important. Uh, it was the second one, I think. But anyway, Egypt and Ethiopia will have to coordinate on the HAD and the GERD. The HAD is the the Aswan High Dam, um, yeah, which is along the Nile as well, and it's a large uh, dam. Uh, but the GERD is going to be much larger than it, of course. Uh, but since they're both on the same river, the Nile, Ethiopia and, e and Egypt will have to coordinate, which could obviously cause problems, especially if they're at war or, or what have you. The GERD may not deliver the correct amount of water to Egypt when needed. And you may as well say to Sudan as well, because Sudan is downstream as well. Uh, of course, that's a possibility. Ethiopia will have to arrange for the sale of its excess electricity. <laughs> I thought that was rather bizarre. I mean, I, I think it would have been wise for the MIT, I'm, a, I'm assuming, uh, scientists uh, uh, to leave Ethiopia, what they're going to do with the excess power, leave that to the, the uh, economists and the marketing experts of, of MIT. I don't know, maybe they solicited their help, but I think it, you know, it goes back to that saying, that's a problem that I would love to have. So, but they're saying that that's a, 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 a controversy. It, that's not a typo. And fourth, the GERD may cause excessive salination in the Nile Delta. You know, the Nile Delta is where the Nile River ends and it goes into the Mediterranean Sea. So there may be excessive salination. Okay, but I think that everyone would be able to live with that. And I think it would be manageable with uh, the science that we have today. But I think it's a small price to pay for Ethiopia uh, being able to provide power from renewable energy, uh, which is um, sustainable. You know, I mean, in the age of of, of uh, environmental friendliness, uh, it, this energy, since it's renewable, is sustainable. So all of the people who are environmentally conscious, the Greenpeace and so forth, they should be jumping on the bandwagon of the GERD and, and supporting it, at, at least in my opinion. The uh, Egypt may receive less of the Nile's water volume, of course, you know. But that's, uh, you know, as they say in you know in real estate, uh, location is everything. So, uh, you know, I, I assume that if if things were uh, were to the contrary, if if Egypt was upstream, they would do the same thing, especially given their history vis-a-vis -vis the Ethiopian government. They're, they're not friendly towards Ethiopians. Okay, a, a pro-GERD commentary given last year by Nature Communication, which is a, from what I can tell, a, a an independent uh, group of scientists from Germany, England, the United States, and, and China. Uh, what they said is that during filling the Aswan High Dam, or the HAD, Reservoir could fall to levels not seen in recent decades, although the risk of water shortage in Ethia, e Egypt is relatively low. The new normal, that is the, uh, you know, at post uh, GERD, when the GERD is in operation, 
will benefit Ethiopia and Sudan without significantly affecting water users in Egypt. So their take on it is it's, it's safe and it's sustainable and it's fair to all three countries involved, Ethiopia, Sudan, and Egypt. And uh, might I add, this commentary uh, or study was done more recently. Uh, it was done last year. So they've been able to, to put together more data than the MIT uh, scientists did six years ago. The bottom line, the international community should support, as I said before, including Greenpeace and, and whatnot, um, uh, should support the GERD because it will provide renewable energy to East Africa. It will also uh, help to connect uh, in a friendly way all of the East African countries, which, which should help to bring peace in, in that region. The DRC can produce 100,000 megawatts of hydroelectric power. Uh, I, I said earlier that uh, the, the uh, GERD will, will generate 6,000, only 6,000. But it, it, that 6,000, uh, it, it will be excessive energy for, for Ethiopia. They will be able to, to uh, sell their ex excess energy to other countries. But Ethiopia alone has the ability to produce 45,000 megawatts of hydroelectric uh, power. So they are able to, to provide power for all of, of uh, East Africa. And, and it's even said that e Egypt may end up buying power from Ethiopia in the future. So, um, but what about the DRC, the Democratic Republic of the Congo? They have the potential to produce 100,000 megawatts, whereas Ethiopia has the potential for 45,000, so twice as much. So they would be able to, and they will be able to, produce enough energy for all of Central Africa. South Africa uh, is producing enough for its country, um, which is a large economy and a large uh, portion of Southern Africa. The DRC would be able to produce power to all areas of Central Africa, including down to Namibia in Southwest Africa uh, with this uh, potential because of all of the water sources. Uh, Zimbabwe recently asked for a loan uh, for a billion dollars or so to build a, a similar hydroelectric uh, power plant. Uh, to to fuel its industries, so so th the thing here is that one reason why the West is afraid is that once Ethiopia is is uh, independent uh, in, in terms of of electricity and is even exporting its electricity, then that's going to spread to places like like uh, the DRC. And the DRC recently asked either the the uh, IMF or the World Bank for a loan for a billion dollars or so, as I as I said just a little while ago, uh, to build a a, a dam uh, to to generate power, renewable energy, uh, but uh, it got denied from from what I understand. But after the success of of the GERD which can bring in $2 billion a year, um, and it only cost $5 billion, it can pay for itself in three years. So what would happen if, if uh, the DRC um, uh, tapped into its 100,000 uh, uh, megawatt potential? How much would it be able to make? So th this is a fear of the West, is uh, African independence, uh, economic independence. There would be no need for aid anymore because these powerhouses, the uh, Ethiopia in the East, Nigeria would probably do something in the West. 
um, uh, you have South Africa and Zimbabwe in the south, and then you have the DRC in, in, uh, in the center. And uh, th they would all be producing renewable energy and making a, a profit from it. So uh, for, for what is the foundation of industry, uh, electricity. Ugandan President Museveni has taken a neutral position uh, on the GERD. He's, he's become a mediator, basically. He's talked to Egypt, he's talked to Sudan, he's talked to Ethiopia, and uh, he's, he, he's trying to uh, be neutral on the position, and, and he, he definitely seems to be, which, which is the diplomatic approach. And I, and I understand that. Uh, Rwandan President Paul Kagame said that he believes that the scientists uh, would uh, should decide the GERD's future. Uh, I, I'm wondering uh, which scientists is he talking about? As, as I said, some scientists say that it's, it's excuse me, is benign and it's uh, beneficial to the region, whereas the, some of the naysayers are saying that it could do things uh, that are harmful. But in my, in my opinion, uh, these, the benefits outweigh the, uh, the, uh, uh, the shortcomings. So uh, this uh, Paul Kagame um, you know, saying that scientists should uh, decide the GERD's future. No, Paul. We Africans should defy, uh, should decide uh, the GERD's future. You know, we know what's best for for Africa. We don't need outsiders to come in and tell us. So, uh, the Kenyan president Kenyatta recently signed a. Memorandum of Understanding with the Egyptian military. And as you know, the Egypt uh, is at odds with, uh, with Ethiopia when it comes to the GERD. It's, it's fearful. And so uh, in this political climate, President Kenyatta, the, one of the biggest sellouts on the continent, uh, maybe only the DRC takes takes his place, or one of those clowns from from the uh, francophone countries. Uh, he's siding with Egypt, an Arab country. So the reason why the West is afraid of the GERD, Ethiopia's GERD, is very simple. It will it will set a precedent for uh, African solving. Uh, African problems, uh, bringing their own solutions, and it will. Uh, more importantly, it will. It will uh, be perhaps the biggest example uh, in recent memory of a, an African country doing what it should, uh, benefiting from from uh, its natural resources, which are the greatest in the world. 